Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Minorities continue to face persecution in Bangladesh. Pakistan has yet to grant the US FBI access to Lashkar terrorist Sajid Mir. And terror groups operating freely under Taliban. The Hindu community is the second largest religious group in Muslim-dominated Bangladesh, constituting approximately 7.95% of the total population. In recent years, the minority Hindus have been facing persecution at the hands of hardline Islamists in the country. Despite assurances of safety and protection from Bangladesh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Let's take a closer look at how and why attacks on minorities in Bangladesh are being committed. This demolished Hindu temple in Bangladesh's Kumila district is yet another illustration of festering extremism and intolerance against minorities in the country. Two Muslim teenagers were apprehended by locals for defiling the idol of the Hindu goddess Kali. Police suspect that both the teenagers committed this act of vandalism at the urging of radical Islamic extremist groups in the region. Another ancient Kali temple was targeted a day after the attack in the Kumila district. Multiple unidentified assailants, under the cover of night, broke into a Kali temple in the Janaida district. The idol of Kali was found broken into several pieces. Kali Mandir, jete rathe rando kare, keba kara, eti je bhangsur kore, tar matha dur rastay niye gye, anto to mandir chike dusho gaus duri rastar upore rakse, jete amra jara shunaton. ধর্মাবলম্বী আছে তাদের হৃদয়কে অত্যন্ত ব্যথিত করেছে বাংলাদেশ প্রধানমন্ত্রীর কাছে আমাদের বিনীত আবেদন এই ন্যাকারজনক ঘটনার সুষ্ঠু তদন্ত সাপেক্ষে এবং বিচার বিভাগীয় একটা বিচার করার জন্য আমি করুণ আকুতি জানাচ্ছি These two incidents are the latest in a string of attacks on the minority Hindu community and their places of worship. Last year, after a fake news story of the desecration of the Islamic holy book, the Quran, in a Hindu puja pandal spread in the Kamila district. More than 100 Hindu temples, festival locations, businesses and houses were reportedly attacked after the incident, and there were seven fatalities. Fake news traveled fast, and the after-effects were all too real for these minorities in Bangladesh. The Hindu community has not been the only minority group in the country to be under threat either. A Buddhist monastery in the southwest part of the nation was also burned down. Furthermore, in October last year, a violent Muslim mob also attacked an International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Iskon Temple, in the country's Noakali region. Riches were stolen and the temple was desecrated. In March this year, another Iskon-affiliated Rashikanta Jeev temple was also vandalized by a mob. In Bangladesh, radical Muslim groups have been allowed to grow unchecked, resulting in a continuously simmering deep-seated anti-Hindu sentiment. As was seen in the wake of the spread of the false story about the desecration of the Quran in a Hindu prayer area, the slightest provocation, real or imagined, is enough to bring anti-Hindu sentiment to a boil. The United Nations has rebuked the Bangladeshi government over these attacks and has called for an investigation into the orchestrated crimes against the Hindu minority community. Amnesty International, also noting the pattern of attacks on Hindus, condemned the government, saying that the state had failed in its duty to protect minorities. The world should take account of these atrocities which are being carried out and try to crack down on these kinds of activities in order that the peaceful and the friendly people of Bangladesh could lead a life with dignity, including the minorities. Several independent research groups found that social media was used as an effective tool to spread hatred against minorities in Bangladesh. Since 2012, there have been many attacks on religious minorities in Bangladesh as a result of online posts that spread misleading or false information. There has been a clear pattern to these attacks. A rumor is sparked that members of a minority group have disparaged Islam, and then this rumor is spread swiftly online. Recent studies have revealed shifting patterns in Bangladesh's Islamic majoritarianism, where being accused of committing blasphemy and atheism can have deadly consequences. For example, violent Islamists have murdered atheist bloggers. 
and a number of so-called blasphemous authors, cartoonists, publishers, and bloggers have been forced to reside in exile. According to prominent representatives of many minority communities, the attacks on their homes and places of worship by Islamic extremists also have a financial incentive, with attempts to rob the minority groups of their land and possessions. While the Bangladeshi government claims that minorities are protected, little has been done to actually prevent these attacks against Hindus and other religious minorities from happening time and time again. Islamabad seeks to exit from grey list of financial action task force on grounds of acting against terror groups and terrorist funding in Pakistan. But according to a recent report of an independent geopolitic blog, the country is still to provide access to the US FBI to interrogate Sajid Mir. Sajid Majid Mir, India's most wanted terrorists on whom the US has placed a bounty of 5 million US dollars for his role in the 2611 Mumbai attacks has been jailed for over 15 years in a terror financing case by an anti-terrorism court in Pakistan. A report. Pakistan for many years has been under fire from different political quarters across the globe for providing a safe haven for terrorist groups. According to a recent report by independent geopolitic blog, Pakistan continues to save Lashkar terrorist Sajid Mir through a maze of red herrings to escape the news of FATF's grey list. As per the report, Islamabad has yet not given access to US FBI to interrogate 2611 planner Mir. It is understood that US FBI have sought permission of Islamabad to interrogate Mir for Mumbai terror strike but no access has been provided to the terrorist as he could reveal the entire link between LAT leadership and the Pakistani deep state in targeting Mumbai. That Pakistan is a haven of terrorism and has been nurturing terrorists through a policy which we can call as a foreign policy of cross-border terrorism against India and earlier against Afghanistan. The, this is a well-known fact and that is the reason for the last two years Pakistan has been investigated for its funding, financing of terror activities because according to all estimates, whichever independent estimate you take, there are hundreds and hundreds of groups operating freely and often under the patronage of the Rawalpindi establishment. While Pakistan has no intentions of allowing FBI any access to incarcerated Mir, China being the close ally of Pakistan, voted India and the United States bid to designate Sajid Mir as the global terrorist under the 1267 Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee. Just as India, US and France are on the same page in holding Pakistan-based terror groups and terrorists accountable, China has no qualms in supporting Pakistan by blocking any counter-terror move against Islamabad at the UNSC, citing rules and obscure procedures. As Beijing has blocked designation of LET's chief financer, Abdul Rahman Makki, and Jaish Muhammad's de facto leader, Rauf Azhar, as global terrorist by the 1267 committee earlier this year. Well, China is a very special case where uh, its geopolitics uh, takes precedence over a fight against terrorism. It talks about the terrorism by ETIM and other groups, but at the same time it shields the Pakistan-based terrorism terrorists uh, from being listed at the United Nations Security Council under 1267 committee an umpteen number of times by putting technical holes. This clearly is an indication that it tries to help Pakistan in nurturing terrorists against India. And there's no other way to explain it. You might have technical, uh, any kind of X number of technical objections, but they don't mean anything when the world knows that who these terrorists are. Pakistan's list of FATF shared actionable items does not accurately represent its commitment to battling terrorism. 
In reality, the nation continues to serve as a refuge for terrorists and organizations that finance terrorism. According to U.S. Congressional report, Pakistan is also home to 12 foreign terror organizations, five being India-centric, including lashkar e taiba and jaish e muhammad U.S. officials have also identified Pakistan as a base of operations for numerous armed and non-state terrorist groups, some of which have existed since the 1980s. Pakistan is at the crossroads right now. Its economic condition is extremely bad. Uh, it has been called out by a large number of countries. The FATF is on its breathing down its neck to comply with the uh, action as far as financing of terror activities are concerned. Off and on, it's been now more than two, three years that it has been going through it and trying to get out of it. In order to do that, it has to be seen to be complying with certain uh, activities and that's precisely what it's doing. So it's a sham. One need not be uh, fooled by this. From radicalization of its youth to training and arming them for anti-India activities, Pakistan continues to keep terror outfits as part of its statecraft. The report of the independent geopolitic blog is merely a vindication of what the Indian government has been trying to tell the world loud and clear for years. Terror factories in Pakistan and along the line of control in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir continue to infiltrate terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. The objective is to incite violence in the Union territory at the request of Pakistan's army and spy agency, the ISI. However, security forces are vigilant enough to respond appropriately. In the latest operation, security forces eliminated two Lashka terrorists in Anantanag district. A report. Pakbak terrorists, with the support of their mentors across the borders, have unleashed a reign of terror on innocent civilians in Jammu and Kashmir. Today, even as the people of the region yearn for peace, the state has been stained with the blood of innocents. However, the Indian security forces has done the yeoman service to the nation by way of successful counter-terrorist operations. Recently, on October 10th, security forces neutralized two dreaded Lashka terrorists in Anantanag district of Jammu and Kashmir. Acting on a piece of specific information regarding the presence of terrorists in the Tangpawa area of Anantanag, Jammu and Kashmir police and security forces launched a joint cordon and search operation in the area. During the search operation, as the joint search party approached towards the suspected spot, the hiding terrorists fired indiscriminately upon the joint search party, which was retaliated effectively, leading to an encounter. Police identified the slain ultras as Asif Ahmed Rashi and Wakil Ahmed Bhatt. As per police records, both the terrorists were involved in several crime cases, including attacks on police and civilian atrocities. Kashmir has been uh, the target of Pakistan always. And Pakistan has been sending infiltrators into Kashmir to spoil the peace in Kashmir. And uh, targeted killing of civilians and the policemen in Kashmir is a way of uh, uh, you know, troubling and disturbing the peace in the valley. And this is uh, increased especially after the abrogation of Article 370. And uh, uh, this has to be stopped and, the, secure and uh, the defense forces are taking strong steps to stop it. The situation in Jammu and Kashmir has shown a considerable improvement symbolizing a return to normalcy. The security environment has considerably shifted in the favor of security forces. The terrorists have suffered heavy attrition and simultaneously have not been able to replenish their dwindling cadres due to the effectiveness of the counter-infiltration measures. This has led to a sharp decline in the violence inflicted by terrorists. 
Counter terror data reveals that total number of terror related incidents has come down from 417 in 2018 to 110 up to September 30, 2021, with 255 incidents in 2019, 244 in 2020, 228 in the entire 2021, and 90 up to September 30, 2022. The Indian security forces are framing strategies for uprooting the terror ecosystem to consolidate peace in the region. Pakistan needs a severe blow and only then it will understand that sending terrorists to India is, uh, is going to give very, very bad results to Pakistan. Firstly, Pakistan should be declared a terror country at the United Nations. Secondly, Pakistan should be uh, banned by the entire world for sponsoring terrorism and India needs to take very strong steps. The Indian Defence Forces need to take strong steps in shutting down the terror training camps across the LOC and teaching Pakistan a very, very strong lesson. People in Kashmir have understood that terrorism and separatism cannot flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. For Pakistan, which has been attempting to internationalize the Kashmir issue for more than seven decades, this is the worst suffering. The notorious intelligence agency of Pakistan, ISI, aims to reawaken the fear of being killed in the minds of ordinary Kashmiris. However, such heinous terrorist activities will not be able to undermine the advancement of Jammu and Kashmir. Afghanistan has long been a base for terrorists with ambitions for global jihad. According to various diplomatic sources, dozens of groups that have been present since the Taliban's last turn to power from 1996 to 2001 are again operational, looking for opportunities to expand their reach. Security across the country is virtually non-existent. Take a look. Shortly after the fall of Kabul last year, Several observers predicted a spike in terrorism. One of the most serious concerns voiced by Western observers was that, under the Taliban, Afghanistan would become a haven for transnational terrorist groups. A year on, a transnational attack in the West from Afghanistan appears unlikely, but there are certainly reasons for concern. A UN intelligence report from June 2022 concluded that Al-Qaeda has established a foothold in the country and has an increased freedom of action. The fact that Ayman al-Zawahiri was caught in Afghanistan is also testimony to the fact that the Taliban's promise of not letting Afghan soil be used for terrorist purposes against the Americans, that has also turned out to be false. So the Taliban are breaking one promise after the other. There are several reasons behind Afghanistan's appeal to global terrorists. First, the instability in governance and the humanitarian and economic disasters in Afghanistan are distracting the West away from their growing security threats. Most diplomats are focused on human rights issues and the growing food and heating fuel scarcity as the winter approaches. Terrorists are able to conduct their operations and movement or personnel with ease across the country because no one is looking for them vigorously. Second, the struggle for power inside the current regime and among their fellow Islamist terrorists makes Afghanistan a pomegranate ripe for picking. The global leadership of ISIS likely thinks they can woo fighters from each of these groups and take over the nation when they are ready to. Third, it seems that once again Pakistan has convinced the gullible world leaders that Pakistani security services can handle counterterrorism in South Asia and keep it under control, even though they are the primary sustainers of it. It is clear now, based on the uptake in terrorist activity in Afghanistan and Pakistan, the promises made to NATO nations will not come to fruition. 
sections in America, they have been saying, especially their defense forces, they have been saying that Pakistanis, they pretend that they are aligned with United States and yet they have been harming American interests. To date, there have been no major plots linked to the country, but only one year has passed since the Taliban seized power. That may be too short to build the facilities and smuggling and recruitment networks that are necessary to wage a transnational campaign. The threat may increase as time passes. Moreover, Afghanistan's regional neighbors and the international community are concerned that the Taliban may be unable or unwilling to take effective action against terrorist groups. All of this being the case, an increased transnational terrorist threat from Afghanistan cannot be ruled out in the medium and long term. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.